Catalyst is the fourth studio album by American pop punk band New Found Glory released on May 18, 2004 through Drive Through and Geffen Records. It was the band's last album to be produced by Neil Avern until 2011's Radio Surgery. New Found Glory released their third album Sticks and Stones in June 2002 as a joint release between MCA and Drive Through Records. By December, the group were working on new songs, which vocalist Jordan Pundik said were getting a lot heavier and even more aggressive. Between April and June 2003, they co-headlined the Honda Civic Tour with Good Charlotte. They had a practice room backstage that allowed them to work on new material. Around this time, MCA Records was absorbed by Universal Music Group subsidiary Geffen Records, which resulted in its staff and roster being moved to Geffen. In August, the group toured Australia and Japan, before taking a week's break. After this, they started pre-production for their next album at the Hurley Factory in Costa Mesa, California and the Swing House. The group moved into a house together in Malibu, California, and worked on material whenever they wanted to. It gave them more free time, compared to their past records, to develop their song ideas. After playing two shows, the band began recording their next album in September 2003. The sessions were helmed by producer Neil Avrin and took place at Royal Tone and Sunset Sound Studios. Avrin was assisted by engineers Chris Wanzer, Ryan Castle, and Femio Hernandez. Castle and Travis Huff served as Pro Tools engineers. Recording finished in January 2004, after the band tracked 18 songs in total. A variety of session musicians appear on the recordings, David Campbell, Joel Derween, Charlie Bishara, Larry Corbett, Riley Overin, Deborah Bird, Angela Fisher and Tony Wilkins. In addition, members of the group's contemporaries also appear, Freddie Christian of Madball, James Dewey's of Reggie and the Full Effect, Keyboards on Failures Not. Flattering, Andy Jackson of Hot Rod Circuit, Toby Morse of H2O on Hazen Street. Tom Lordalgy mixed the tracks at South Beach Studios, before they were mastered by Ted Jensen. When the band started out, they would write material they enjoyed and not overthink it. For their self-titled and Sticks and Stones albums, they focused more on what their fans would like. With Catalyst, they returned to the earlier method of writing whatever they enjoyed. Pundik said the band wanted to reinvent themselves musically with Catalyst. While the album is classed as pop-punk, it showcases influence from hardcore punk. In addition, it introduces a May choir, metal and hardcore punk-esque riffs, and string and keyboard instruments to the group's sound. Pundik said the guitars were a lot bigger sounding, compared to those heard on Sticks and Stones. He added that the songs were predominantly riff-based. His vocals were compared to American Hi-Fi frontman Stacy Jones. Discussing the album's title, Baluki explained, a catalyst is something that can spark change or help bring about change without actually being changed by the reaction itself. Intro is a short 37 seconds long song, which talks about people who treat punk rock as a fashion style. Gilbert came up with the riff to all downhill from here while driving. He was on his way to practice as he randomly started singing the riff. In his head. He subsequently wrote the rest of the song on the day. He said it was about any kind of relationship with someone goes sour and things go south from there. It drew comparison to Alkaline Trio. This diester sees Pundik singing in a higher vocal register, earning a comparison to Davy Havoc of AFI. Truth of My Youth is an up-tempo track that was reminiscent of the group's older material, and is followed by the ballad I Don't Wanna Know. It talks about a couple's love maturing, and features violins in the vein of Yellow Card. Your biggest mistake showed the band's strength in writing pop-punk material. Gilbert wrote a lead part over the chorus in Failures Not Flattering, which Pundit jokingly said sounded like it was from Beverly Hills, 90210. Gilbert brought Dewey's in to add a keyboard in the intro and chorus, earning it a comparison to the Get Up Kids. Bolucki said the drums were recorded in an isolation booth to give it an extremely tight, 1980s, drum sound. The song went under the working title Belinda Carlisle due to its 1980s sound. According to Gilbert, the track is about making mistakes, and also serves as a wake-up call for a person to change. And if they don't, it's all gonna be messed. Up. Ending in Tragedy is a ballad about a guy trying to save a relationship, and is followed by hardcore punk track At Least I'm Known for Something. No News is Good News is influenced by New Wave and discusses how the media can be obsessed on negative situations. The closing track Who Am I is followed on the CD by two hidden joke tracks. In January 2004, Gilbert played a handful of shows with his former band Shy Halud. On February 18, 2004, Catalyst was announced for release in May. 
A music video was filmed for All Downhill From Here on March 15 in Los Angeles, California with director Meyer Davis. The track was released as a single on March 22, before being released to Modern Rock Radio on April 6. On April 22, the All Downhill From Here music video was posted on launch. Com, and premiered on Total Request Live the following day. It features the band performing combined with clay models and computer graphics created by French animation company No Brains. The group went with Avis treatment as they were tired of previous proposals that attempted to convey heartbreak, and instead went with one that had no relation to the lyrics. Catalyst was made available for streaming on May 13th, before being released on May 18th through Geffen at drive through Records. Some CD copies had an enhanced portion that featured a making of the music video for All Downhill From Here. Copes purchased from Best Buy included a code to download the bonus track Whiskey Rose. To promote its release, the group did a series of club shows, festival appearances, in-store performances, MTV interviews, and an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Newfound Glory performing on stage, May 4, 2004 a music video wad filmed for Failures Not Flattering in late June with Avis directing again. Between late June and mid-August, the group performed on the Warp Tour. For the outing, Dewey's joined the group as a touring keyboardist. Failures Not Flattering was released to radio on July 26. The music video for it premiered two days later on Total Request Live. The clip shows the band shrunken down and held captive by two regular-sized individuals. They eventually escape and stumble into a party. However, due to their size, they are ignored. The group start performing, the music they make starts to animate characters such as a vampire from a TV and aliens from a video game. Later on, the band is shown asleep, before being sucked up by a vacuum cleaner. Truth of My Youth was released as a single on August 17. At the end of the month and the start of September, the group went on a brief European tour, which included performances at the Reading and Leeds festivals. On September 20, a music video was filmed for I Don't Wanna Know in Los Angeles with director Liz Friedlander. Following the filming, the group played a few shows in Japan with Yellow Card and Hazen Street. In October and November, the group supported Green Day on their headlining U.S. tour. On October 25, a music video for I Don't Wanna Know premiered on Total Request Live. The following day, I Don't Wanna Know was released to Modern Rock Radio and Failures Not Flattering was released as a single. In December, the group went on an Australia tour with support from Reggie and The Full Effect, Righteous Jams, the explosion and hot water music. In January 2005, the band supported Green Day on a tour of Europe. Following this, the band went on a headlining UK tour, which lasted until mid-February, with hot water music and the explosion. I Don't Wanna Know was released as a single on February 14th. Between early March and late May, the band went on a headlining club tour, dubbed the Back to Basics Tour. They were supported by Reggie and the Full Effect and Isley. Entertainment Weekly writer Sean Richardson praised the band for adding tracks that range from string-laden balladry to surging hardcore alongside their pop-punk repertoire, concluding that they may have eyes for the top 40, but these skater boys still know how to rock. Johnny Loftus from All Music said, Catalyst doesn't quite graduate newfound glory from the punk pop rungs. From its main aesthetic thrust to the pristine mixing and production, this is a slick and durable drive through missive. Micro tweaked for maximum warp tour ROI. Still, the guys in NFG have been at this a while, so a little exploration is not only understandable, it's expected. To that end, Catalyst's East Coast hardcore kickoff is welcome. Rolling Stone writer Kirk Miller gave note of the 80s trash metal aesthetics that tracks like this disaster and at least I am known for something utilize, as well as other various subgenres throughout the track listing, concluding that P Band's extra effort shows. Giving its pop glory some newfound energy. Robert Criscow graded the album as a dud, indicating a bad record whose details rarely merit further thought. Writing for the Chicago Tribune, Blair R. Fisher criticized. Jordan Pundick's vocal performance for getting more irritating with every song. The album debuted at a career-high number three on the Billboard 200 chart, after selling 146,000 copies in its first week. It was later certified gold by the Recording Industry Association of America in August 2004. As of June 2005, the album has sold over 600,000 copies. The All Downhill From Here music video was nominated for Best Breakthrough Video at the 2004 MTV Video Music Awards. Philip Obenstein of Alternative Press said the album was a nostalgic snapshot of a mid-career transition, 
which not only displayed what the group were capable of when under pressure, but also that pop punk could reach a broader radio and MTV audience without compromising its credibility. In 2016, Gilbert ranked Catalyst as his second to least favorite New Found Glory album. Looking back, he said it doesn't really make any sense, Catalyst is all over the place, musically. The group performed the album in its entirety on a tour in 2017 to celebrate the 20th anniversary since they formed. All songs written by Newfound Glory. Personnel per booklet. Thanks for watching.